I'm here right now with Matt and Dimitri from the Eschatones. Uh, what's up, fellas? Nothing. Just having a beer watching the Flyers. <laughs> right on. Okay. Um, now you guys are from uh, you guys are from Perkasy, uh, PA. Uh, I grew up right in uh, Telford, so like I kind I kind of know like right where you guys are at. Um, yeah. Well, I'm. I'm from Perkasy. Yeah, Rob, Rob lives in Dublin. We're kind of from all over the place. I mean, yeah. Drew and I were both in Philly, but so basically just the whole Philly Bucks County area. We're yeah, based in. we practice close to Perkasy, so that's yeah. we just say Perkasy. So how did, how did you guys all meet? Um, well, I've been playing with the Drew since I was like 14 in different bands. We had a ska band in high school. Um, we played in another band called The Creeps with Robbie playing drums, and then Drew and Dimitri played in a Boston-based ska band. Yeah, Drew, Drew and I both went to school up in Boston, and yeah, we the whole four years that we were there, we played in a ska band called MCM, um, and had some original songs, played some shows, and then both ended up moving back to Philly after school, so kind of kept it going here. Now you guys uh, just released a self-titled uh, full length. It's um uh, full length. Yeah, it's yeah, full yeah, length because it's because it's eleven <laughs> tracks, but it's really only like eighteen and a half minutes. Yeah, I was I was gonna mention that it's uh <laughs> I was almost comparing it to the uh, classics of love album that just came out. It's like a full like thirteen songs, fifteen minute album. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Which is actually kind of cool. I like that. You get the point across in two minutes. Because, because technically it's an EP because it's under twenty five minutes, but it's eleven songs, so you get to bump it up to the full length. <laughs> you figure that makes it sound a little like we have been doing something for the past four years. <laughs> <laughs> is that I was I was going to ask that too. Like how how long have you guys been together? I guess, I guess four years. Uh, something like that. We started. We were going to be a Misfits cover band. It's just not, a, a not something really, to do. Yeah, not really four years of like consistently doing stuff, I guess. But. We're pretty lazy. And, <laughs> well, like, the thing is, like, Rob would go away to school and Drew would go away to Boston, so we didn't really have anything to do for three quarters of the year. And then now everybody's kind of moving back, so we're kind of really just getting into it full swing. Very cool. Um, did you guys did you guys record did you guys record the album locally or is it is it uh, self self produced or? Um, it's professionally produced <laughs> by, in a real big boy studio. <laughs> it was at uh, Forge Recording Studios in Orland. Okay. Ron De Silvestro was, was that the right? Yes, yeah. that was the last name. Yeah. yeah, Ron De Silvestro is the producer. Now you um. Now you guys have like a, I guess almost I don't know I don't know how to describe how would you what would you describe your your sound is like I hear a lot of like early hardcore and like even like a street punk I influence would, as, as well as like pepper in some of like ska flavor. Yeah, it's like if the boss like if Dickie Barrett and Henry Rollins had a kid. And stiz a crack from leftover crack, raise the baby. <laughs>
I myself personally am like I usually lean towards more more like traditional stuff when I listen to ska, right. and uh, and like a lot of bands that are like ska punk if 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 you want to call it that are are more of like a uh, pop punk with horns kind of a sound and yeah. and it's a lot of that I'm not too into. The one thing I really liked about your sound is uh, it's it's real punk. And uh, and like the short song sings, I mean that kind of fits. That kind of fits that whole thing. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I, I don't try not to sound like a dickhead, but no, no, no. I get, I get. It. It's like but, all. Look, I don't think pop and punk belong in the same phrase. Yeah, it's. I don't know. Like I'm into some like third wave ska stuff, but when you, when it gets too poppy, like I can't get into real big fish anymore. Like that kind of real like poppy stuff. It's just like pop music with horns and it's not it's too far away from the roots and i just can't get into it that much who are some of who, who are some of your influences either like as a band or individually or um like you mentioned you're you're gonna be a misfits cover band but but uh you know i don't know for me i i always go back at, to the boston's just because i know i don't we don't really sound like them but i think just subject matter and the way they talk and the way they put themselves out there that's one of the big ones for me and and again with the misfits, it's always like I have the weird obsession with horror movie stuff too, so that kind of comes out. I remember seeing you guys back at uh, oh, I'm trying to think of what show it was. It was at the fire. It was the fire. It was the uh, Taj Mahal trio show. Yeah, 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 that's right. That was um, the day where we got our first beers as a band. Our nice. first free free yes. beers from the from the venue. Wait, don't they have like a what is it like? one beer or like two beers yeah. like, no they, they give you tickets <laughs> they give you a ticket that you can redeem for a certain beer only only certain types and it's and it's just one beer or was it like were you drinking like no a- it was one it was one beer <laughs> you, get, you get one ticket yeah. one beer so no, gracious of them very excited but yeah i think you guys were one of the first bands that went on I think we were first yeah though, i think we played very first yeah. there was like and, and yeah there was like four people people yeah <laughs> Because we actually didn't want to play right away because nobody was showing up yet. Yeah, we yeah. Just stall. <laughs> yeah, we were ducking the guy from. Yeah. I mean, I guess there was like a total of maybe 30, 40 people that uh, <clears throat> came through throughout the night. Uh, do you guys? Do you guys run into that? Like, I noticed that a lot with like local shows. It, it's it's almost depressing that. Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. Being, especially when you're getting into like. Especially in like the ska scene, because no, nobody cares. It seems like you know what I mean. And, and the people that do, I mean, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how old you guys are, but I remember like in the '90s, like um, you know, back when the Boston's were blowing up and stuff. Like when the Boston's would come through, like they would bring like a hardcore band on tour with them, and yeah, and like kind of the different scenes kind of merged and fit together better and like I notice like nowadays kind of it shit's a little more like separated and yeah you know th- th- these people come to see their band and then they all go home when their band is done and, and stuff like that I noticed that you guys like hung out the whole night and checked out all the bands I thought that was cool I also thought it was very cool Matt that you um you had like a good sense of humor about uh, playing for three people, well, and that kind yeah, of made, well, it, that I mean, kinda made me really dig this. Sh- yeah. <laughs> really I mean, dig your. To, I've been to shows before where people completely just blow it up and pretend like it isn't happening, and that's just ridiculous because you're not going to make like a shitty situation be any better. Where it's like, all right, there's six people here, but I might as well the six of them and the four of us might as well have a good time. Yeah. Right. Now the now the standout song. For me, that night when you played that, like the whole thing that turned me on to you guys was, uh, it, it's still my my favorite one too. Even even on the album, like with with it re-recorded as Daily Grind. I don't, there's something about that song that uh, everybody's favorite. Yeah, <laughs> I, we're happy with that one. I mean, that's that's one of the songs that's been around for like four yeah, that, or five years <laughs> now. That's the first the first song we ever did was Young Punks, and then Daily Grind, and it was within a week yeah. or two ago. So those songs are like four years old. So we should they should be the best because we've been playing it the longest. And so it's almost at the point now where we're almost kind of sick of it, but we understand that it 
probably is the best one we've written so far. It's it's becoming your Achilles heel. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good one. It's fun. Yeah, I definitely I definitely enjoyed it. You guys have, um, I saw you guys have a couple shows coming up in, I guess it was May, uh, you got yeah. one in Phoenixville, one in, uh, Fishtown, you yeah. wanna, um, let people know what's up with that, where they can come uh, check you guys out live? Yeah, the, uh, there's no, the, they're not, you know, definitely, they're still putting out all the, you know, find out who's playing and everything, but the one, they're on May 22nd and May 24th, the 22nd is at Phoenixville, um, at the Polish club, I believe it's through, uh, a guy that's a friend of a friend of mine, uh, through fast break Ent- entertainment. And there's a band torn through actually from Detroit called against the grain. who's actually a pretty good punk band. They sound like a, like a Murphy's law style. Okay. And then, uh, the one on the 24th is at the M room in Fishtown, which I'm, I heard back. They, you know, they said they're going to let me know more info, but that was, a week ago, and I didn't get anything back yet, but there will be definite, definitely more information going up on the uh, the Facebook page once we get all the details. Now, the album is available for um, for Name Your Own Price. Yeah. On uh, Bandcamp. Yep. I'm gonna post. I'm gonna, I'm gonna post links to it in the episode description. That would be awesome. But um. So, so you can, you can get the new Escatones album um, if you want to pay nothing. You can pay nothing if you want to give the guys a donation. That would be much better because I'm sure they put some money into recording it and would appreciate. Yeah, we put <laughs> appreciate payment. We put a guess. lot of money into it. We just figured, I mean, what if we're gonna charge three dollars for a download? It's like what's gonna be important to us getting three dollars or that maybe a person that wasn't gonna download it in the first place gets it and then gets into us so yeah it's it's up there for free if people want to get it we're gonna do it for five bucks but then we figured out we're actually gonna get physical copies made eventually so those will those will be a couple bucks yep right now if i mean i don't know with the way i guess this is kind of like a what's your opinion kind of a question but like kind of the way the music is in like the digital like i'm 35 and i remember when when you used to have to buy a CD, right? And like, and because I mean, I'm not—I was never rich or had a lot of money, so I might buy like maybe a couple CDs a week or even a month. And, and 
you know, you tend to like listen to that because it's the new CD and, and like really get to know it. And nowadays, it's kind of everything's at your fingertips. Like people can pirate anything that they want. Yeah, actually, our our album's up for pirate. If you go on, on <laughs> some, some pirating sites, it's on there. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But do you almost think it's it's more it's it's almost more um, you know it makes it makes more sense almost to to almost like give your music away for free in, in this kind of a uh, I don't know. Definitely true. I mean, especially if someone like like a band like us, we're still just trying to get people to actually hear the music and kind of get into it and you know care about the band. And I mean, if there's there's all these other bands that are putting their music out for free. I mean. So you gotta do. You're up against a bunch of other bands that everyone can listen to for free. You gotta find them to like, find a way to get them to care about your band. You know. <laughs> do you do you know the address of the Bandcamp page off the top of your head? Yeah, it's just uh, the Escatones.bandcamp.com. Dang, that was easy. Anyone listening to this should go and check out our album. Yes, there, and it's free. <laughs> it's free. There's nothing better than free albums. But if you do have a couple bucks, and send you it don't their way, so they can maybe get a beer a piece. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we put a lot. We put a lot of money into recording this. We are actually all homeless now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Working on it <laughs> because we sold our houses to record this album. So. <laughs> yeah. It was. It's. Yeah. It was a lot of money to record it. <laughs> No, but it was like it, you know, worth it. We, yeah, worth it was it. totally worth it. It comes out in the quality of it. And never, never would have thought that. We could. Yeah, it definitely does have a good qual- good sound quality. <laughs> yeah, and even if nobody, if it's just free downloads, we don't, you know, nobody ever pays for it, which is totally cool. Yeah, even even if we make no money off it, it's just it's a it was just a good thing to kind of like for for ourselves. Just yeah, so that we have a very you, high quality recordings of our songs. It's a great thing to have. Yeah. How long? How long were you guys in the process of uh, of the recording and stuff? Like, I know when you're when you're paying for it yourself, sometimes you gotta like yeah do we a little to, uh, session, get <laughs> the money up, do another one. We did. Um, it, it totaled two and a half days in in studio, which is like I don't know the guy that was the guy producing it, Ron, was really cool. And like some days we paid for like a half day, and we'd be there for like six seven hours which yeah. was totally like a big help to us like if an extra two or three hours just mastering or mixing is you know if it's keeping us you know with a couple hundred more bucks in our pocket to come back another half day it, it was a big help but we paid for two and a half days we were there for it seemed like forever another day another day to start all over again ever do any like basement shows house house shows or like they always shows? we pl- we did a barn show <laughs> yeah at this um this kid in doylestown he uh he has like one of those double wide garages like outfitted with a little tiny stage and the sound system huh 
but yeah, the barn. Sh- actually, no, we actually played in a real barn, like an old school barn, as the Escatones first show in like '09. <laughs> yeah, there's video of it on YouTube somewhere. But I wish we played more party shows, but they always just turn into like cops showing up. Or, like, four people watching, everybody else is like, Ah, let's get fucking drunk, shut up! <laughs> Speaking of YouTube videos, there's a couple YouTube videos where, um... Where you guys have, uh... I guess, I guess some of the guys from, uh, Critical Havoc? Yeah, the horn section. The horn section, uh, playing yeah. with you guys. Um... I guess, is that something that, uh... That happens frequently. Do you play? Do you play shows with them? Yeah. Well, yeah. the horn section things like some of the songs like really lend themselves to having horn lines, like Daily Grind or Young Punks. They kind of really work to have a horn line. I mean, Young Punks on the CD does have a horn line. So. Yeah. So it's like it's nice. It's like kind of like a compliment thing. Like if we could we could play without them, but if they happen to be around in the area, Jared's a super cool guy. Um, if they're around and they can play, like it's like, yeah, more than welcome, let's play. But we've only ever done it a couple times. Now, did you guys, you guys go to school with him or anything like that? How how did you guys like? Um, no, Jer- Jared's. I guess he's like a freshman in college now, so he's yeah, he's, he's younger. He, than yeah, us. he's like four or five years younger than us, and um. How did I meet Jared? I don't know. I don't know how, how I met know him. him. Oh, oh, oh. Um, our old, our, the guy that played bass before Dimitri, his name is Joe. He, uh, he saw Critical Havoc at a, at like a barn show. I, I think it was another barn show. And, um, he said, oh, you should look these guys up and play a show with them. And I just ended up talking to Jared and he came to a practice or two and it just kind of ended up putting a horn line or two to a song. All right. I'm, I'm going to wrap it up. Um, Matt Dimitri, thanks a lot for doing this. Um, Thank you. You can get the Escatones album at theescatones.bandcamp.com. You can catch them at the Polish Club in Phoenixville on May 22nd. Yeah. And With the Noid. <laughs> the Noid? Yeah, I don't know. They're called the Noid. I, I, the Domino's guy? Yeah, that's what Dimitri said. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if it's a reference there or not, but... Uh, Yeah, check them out. They're pretty cool, too. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. All right, man. And we'll talk soon. All right. Take it easy. One second caution. Do it all. Fucking sinners. They are all. Watch them fall. Watch them burn in hell. Salvation passes.
die, you sinner!